Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad to be crafting with you today. Now, normally in my introduction, I would give an overview of all of the projects that I have planned in the video, but this time I'm going to surprise you. We will be using beautiful foliage and florals. We'll also be using some fabric and other fun crafting supplies to create home decor perfect for late summer or early fall decorating. Well, I have lots in store for you today, so let's go ahead and get these projects started. I have been seeing the cutest primitive sunflowers all over Pinterest, and I can't wait to make some with my own shabby chic spin. I'm going to be using the lid from my coffee and from my breadcrumbs to trace the inside and the petals for our flowers. I'm going to be using an assortment of 100% cotton fabrics, but if you wanted something a little more neutral, drop cloth would be a perfect substitute for this project. For each flower, you will need one center and four outer rings. And now that we have everything traced, we're going to simply cut out all of our circles. For your flowers, you'll have your one for your center and then four for your outer petals. So I did one of the floral with three of the muslins for those petals, the floral center with one checked for the petals, and then the rest of those are the plain cotton muslin. I've got a damp rag here and I am going to take a moment to rub off and remove the rest of this blue because they come right off with a little bit of water. So now that we have our four layers for our petals and the center of our flower, we're going to pin all of this into place. Going through all of the layers to make sure when we start our stitching, nothing moves out of place. I have them pinned in place, but I have left a section open because we're going to be stuffing them with polyfill. Now you're going to take a nice big needle and I'm using embroidery floss, but you can use any kind of heavy duty thread that you like. And we're going to do a running stitch close to the edge, but not so close that those stitches are going to come out over time. This is also called a basting stitch. And I am going to do the same thing all the way around, leaving this section open for the stuffing. And of course, I've left my string and my needle on because we are going to be stitching this closed. But now we stuff. Start gently putting in that stuffing careful to not pull out my stitches. And when you make yours, you'll be able to tell how much room you still have for your stuffing. And now using these same running stitches like we did here, we're going to stitch the opening closed. Now as I'm coming to meet up my stitches, because that's where my knot is, and I just want to go a couple of stitches past my knot just to make sure everything is going to stay secure. Just going right over what I've already stitched. And now that I have my needle in the back, I'm going to bring it up underneath one of those loops there and I'm going to bring it and tie a knot, bring it through again and make another knot. Then I can clip my threads. And I'm just going to off camera stuff and stitch this one closed in the same fashion that I have done this one right here. Now to form our petals, we're going to be cutting slits in our fabric, not quite all the way to that center there. I'm making maybe one inch slits here, and that's what we're going to do all the way around our flower. And now that we have all of our petals cut, I'm going to just take and kind of fluff up all of that fabric just to give that more of a shabby appearance there and pull apart each of our petals and just give everything a good fluff. 
Now for my stems, I'm going to be using some of these little bamboo skewers that I picked up at Walmart in the barbecue section, but you could use old stems. How adorable would that be glued onto there? That literally looks like a little sunflower. You can use anything that you want for your stem. I want to use the skewers. So I'm going to open it up like this and come in between the stitches that I made and just gently push that in there until it goes through, making sure that I'm not coming through the top or out the back with my skewer. Just like that. Oh my goodness, these are just so cute. I love those. Now I'm taking a piece of fabric that is two and a half inches wide and 11 inches long, and I'm gonna tie it onto my skewer. And I want to pull tightly because I don't want it to come off. And the fabric can be left just as it is like that, or you can cut a leaf shape on the edges if you prefer. And I just think these are just the cutest. I love these. Well, now let's go ahead and do one that requires no stitching at all. For our no sew version, we are going to be using mason jar lids. And I've already started this right here just to be able to save a little bit of time in the video, but you're going to need 18 strips of fabric that are one inch wide and 10 inches long. You're also going to need another piece of fabric that is five inches in diameter. And I found that my lid to my jar here is the perfect size. So then you will take your strips of fabric, fold those in half, bring this to the inside, and then pull all of that through the loop. All of these cute little ties here that are going to form the petals of our sunflower. Fold your piece in half, bring the ends to the inside, and then bring them through your loop. And when you put all 18 on there, that's going to completely fill up the ring of your mason jar. And now that we have all of our strips of fabric on there, adjust the knots to where they're almost on the actual top, sitting on top of the ring area itself. And now we're going to set that aside and take our center and some of our polyfill and get that glued on. And you're not going to be able to glue the entire bit of your polyfill on there, but it's going to hold it enough for you so it doesn't wobble around while you're trying to get your fabric over the top. And now we're going to place this on the back side of our fabric and bring it up and glue it down. And now we can begin to stuff that in there and we're going to glue that in place as well. And I like to use just a Bondo spreader to press that down just to make sure I am not going to burn myself with all that glue. So now that we have all of that glued down on the back, we're going to take this, turn this over, and push this through the back so it comes through up at the front. And it may take a little bit of effort to do that because there's all of the fabric there and it just snaps into place. And that is the front. How cute is that? So adorable. Now I took the center here and I traced another circle. I'll be gluing that there to cover up the back so it looks nice and neat. And I can also glue a skewer between the two. So that's just gonna give a nice finish to the back. So first I'm gonna load up my glue on the stick there place my fabric over that. And now I can just go in and finish gluing everything down. And there's our little sunflowers. How cute did these turn out? Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next project, we're going to be doing another sunflower and we're going to do a fabric sunflower design on one of these pillow covers. This was my inspiration on Pinterest and I will link that for you below. 
and when you go to their website you are actually going to find the pattern as well now making this pillow would be really cute if you used some of these colors to do a traditional color sunflower but I'm going to be using the same ones that I'd used previously now to save time I have also cut out my pieces and you will need 12 of your large pieces and six of your small to add a vintage look to the center of my flower I used my archival ink in the color coffee and this gorgeous stamp here from my iron orchid designs crockery collection just to give a nice aged vintage look to that center so now let's go ahead and get our flower pieced together with the online tutorial they are stitching their petals in place but I'm going to be using the Sure Bonder fabric glue to attach those to my pillow cover before I begin gluing anything down, I'm going to go ahead and lay out all of my pieces. I also like to start about three inches from the bottom because once that pillow form is in there and it's sitting on the sofa, you want to still be able to see that part of the design. I use contrasting fabric with my petals, but you do whatever is most comfortable for you. And that's my second layer. I love it. It almost looks like a quilt. This is so pretty. And then that's the last layer. And that's what it will look like with the center. I think that looks fantastic. I love it. Now to begin my gluing, I am going to be lifting up each of the individual petals and I'm going to glue and leave about an inch away from this edge. And I'm also going to tuck a piece of cardstock up underneath and just move it around just to make sure I'm not going to glue both pieces of my pillow together. And you can see how quickly that glue sets. Now I'm going to do the same thing here and tack that down. Come over here and you can see I've left about an inch away from the edges and I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. So I've tacked down the front portion here of all of my little flower petals. So I'm going to roll this up and I'm gonna come back and roll these over and tack all of these down now. Put a little glue and tack it down. Lay that down, flop that over, and then I'm gonna do the same thing and glue everything else down up here in the same fashion as I did below. And now that everything is tacked down in there, I'm going to run a bead of glue along the edge, one little section at a time, and glue the center of my flower onto the rest of my petals. And that is what we have so far. I love it. Well, now we need to get a little more on there because more is always more in shabby chic. I love this gathered eyelet ribbon here and so I am going to be adding this trim all the way around the outside edge of the center of my flower and I think that is just gorgeous and again we're just going to glue everything in place. So I'm just going to continue gluing this around the outside edge of the center of my flower and then we'll come back and add a little more bling. Now to finish off my pillow with something blingy, I'm taking this lace and I've actually just taken it and doubled it over in 14 inch strips and I'm not going to cut it because then I can reuse it. So I'm just going to leave it just like that. I'm also going to use this pretty little piece of doily. I even buy little pieces when I find them at the thrift store because they come in handy for little projects as well. 
And then this is just a pin. I'm simply going to take my lace, place the doily over the top of that, and pin through all of these sections. How cute is that? Then once I get my pillow form in there, I'm actually going to take another giant safety pin from the inside and just pin it to the corner up there just like that. And there it is. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, I just love a beautiful pillow. Nothing can update your look more quickly than a cute little pillow. I love it. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our last project. For our last project, we're going to be making some cute little signs that are the perfect size for your tiered trays. And these are just scrap pieces of wood that are four and a half by five inches. And I've given them a coat on all sides of the Rust-Oleum chalked in linen white. I've also got these cute little printables for you. And these are linked below. And I took tissue paper and taped it down to cardstock to print off my images. And the tissue paper that I use is just the plain paper that you would find in the gift wrapping section. Sometimes we'll have a shiny side and a matte side. And I always make sure that I print mine on the matte side. You also want to make sure that your prints are nice and dry before you attempt to decoupage them. And we'll be using Mod Podge to do that. Now I'm going to take some scissors and just cut this away from my cardstock. And then I save this, remove the tape, and just use this over and over again. I'm going to cut around the images. And now I've got a little bit of water here. And I'm going to dampen my fingertips and just come around on the outside edges and kind of tear the paper. It really helps to make that image melt into that wood. So I'm just going to go off camera and take a few minutes to go around all of the edges on each of the images here, and then we'll get to decoupaging. And now that all of my images have been torn, I've taken a few minutes to let the paper dry. Now I'm going to use some matte Mod Podge to apply these to my pre-painted boards. So I'm going to center up my image. I'll pull half of it up. Thin coat of Mod Podge. Start in the middle and gently tap and spread out all my paper, eliminating as many of the wrinkles as I can. Come back over the top with a very light coat. Pull up, light coat of Mod Podge, start in the middle, and tap down. Then I'm going to come back over, smooth out what I can. And there we go. How cute is that? So again, I'm going to go off camera, and I'm going to apply these to the boards in the same fashion that I did this. Then we'll come back and start using some of our embellishments. So I've got all kinds of fun things out here, and I thought for this little sign that my little pink pom-pom trim would look really, really cute on the edges of that. I think that's adorable. And then we'll just see what else we want to put on there. I won't put anything at the bottom because I want it to be able to stand up. And again, we're just going to run a little bit, little dots, so the glue doesn't dry out. I may want one of these little flowers up there, just something cute in the corner. And I like these little things. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. I think that's cute. Added some greenery and a little pink bow there. I thought the flower looked a little bare up there by itself. All right, so now we're finished with this one. And for this, we're taking this white lace trim and gluing that down just on either side. And I think that's going to look really cute. And again, I'm just going to add just a little bit of the glue so it doesn't dry out on me. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit on this one. I've added some greenery, and I like this here too. Then I'm going to glue my little bow there. That is so cute. And I think a button too. I 
Okay, I like it. And now we just have our pumpkin left. I think I want to put these in the center of my flowers here. I'll pick these up at Dollar Tree. I use them in all kinds of crafting. They're already self-adhesive on the back. So I'll just put one in the center there. And then here and here. That's cute. I think I want to wrap you a bow. First I'm going to glue my wheat down. And then I'll glue that to the top. I like how these turned out. They're going to be so cute on a little tiered tray. Well now all I need to do is get everything styled up and show you how cute all of this week's projects turned out. Thank you so much for spending a bit of your time here with me today. It has been my pleasure to craft with you. Let me know in the comments if you plan on making any of this week's projects. And also, for any kind of crafting that you enjoy doing, please share your photos at the Kinda Shabby Crafty Inspiration Facebook group page. I would love to see what you're making. Please subscribe to my channel for more Kinda Shabby but Always Chic Crafty Inspirations. And until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.